Shalom Aleichem to you everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Apostle Raquel of Greater Works Apostolic Center. I pray that you are having a wonderful day or evening, whatever time you watch this video. I pray that all is well with you and with your family. Today, I wanted to hop on real quick because as I was going about my chores today, the Spirit of the Lord started speaking to my heart on a particular matter. And you know, let me tell you, I think someone sent me a message the other day and the person said to me, oh, um, I listened to your teachings and I realize that the Spirit of the Lord has just been downloading a lot of things into your spirit. Uh, the person said something like, I know that you have been getting divine revelation. And the truth is that a lot of times when I come on here and do teachings, it is just like that. So, you know, I just, I'm doing something, going about my business. Maybe I've even done a teaching on the topic before, but the spirit of the Lord gives me fresh revelation, a new download, and I just believe that I need to come on and share. So today I had one of those experiences. I was actually doing housework, right? And as I was doing housework, the Spirit of the Lord started speaking to me. And then I said, okay, okay, Lord, this is, this is awesome. This is wonderful. Um, I'm going to do this teaching. I'm going to do this teaching. I'm tired. I've, it's been a long day, but I'm going to do this teaching. So here I am today. And I want to talk with you really quickly on the topic what they forgot to teach us about tithing what they forgot to teach us about tithing if you're new to this channel let me welcome you i'm apostle raquel of greater works apostolic center i said that already we're a community of believers in yeshua the messiah we study the word of god from a jewish perspective and we walk out our faith in a jewish way if you have been feeling led to this kind of teaching this kind of community you have come to the right place my prayer is that you will subscribe to this channel and become part of our online community and if you're already part of the community welcome back i'm so excited because the lord has really been growing our community he has been leading people leading people to the fountain of the waters of life which is torah which is his word and so i want to welcome you so let's talk about what it didn't teach us about tithing and there are some there are some things that i want to address here and there are some questions that uh, you know over time i've noticed that comes up when we discuss this whole issue of tithing so i'm going to answer about four of those questions and i'm going to do this really quickly amen praise the lord all right now the first thing that i want us to do is i want us to talk about uh, um what the tithe the, the, the what why god instituted tithing and how it works okay but before i do that let me just share with you something else that the lord spoke to my heart today he says my people perish because of lack of knowledge now that lack of knowledge there is talking about torah that same scripture that we like to quote it says god says my people perish because they have rejected truth what is truth torah is truth and so a lot of times people are perishing because they have rejected torah and say that torah is not for us but my goodness what a disadvantage we put ourselves at when we take that approach so i just wanted to share that with you so now what is this whole issue of tithing tithe the word tithe means a tenth right so tithe means a tenth every time we talk about tithing we're talking about a tenth of one's income right and we're going to go into scripture to find out how that worked in bible times no i'm not going to malachi 3 I'm not going there today. We're going to ex we're going to Leviticus, sorry. We're going to Leviticus chapter 27. Leviticus chapter 27. And we I'm going to encourage you also. Please read this chapter on your own. We are going to be looking at uh, This is the last um, chapter in the book of Leviticus and we're going to be looking at uh, some passages here and then we're going to build on that okay so let's begin with um, verse 1 it says the Lord said to Moses speak to the Israelites and say to them if anyone makes a special vow to dedicate persons to the Lord by giving equivalent values set the value 
of a male between the ages of 20 and 60 at 50 shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. What is being discussed here? Well, first things first is that we are going to be talking about redeeming what belongs to the Lord or what a person dedicates to the Lord. What does it mean to redeem? Now, in Israel, based on Leviticus 27, there were people who would come and make a vow to Adonai, as we read in, in verse 2. If anyone makes a special vow to dedicate something to Adonai, what does that mean? If a person makes a vow, um, it is something done voluntary. It is voluntarily, sorry, it is, it is, it is, it is not um, something that is required by Adonai. And so what would happen is that people would make vows to Adonai, right? They would make vows. They would make vow a vow to dedicate something to Adonai. We're going to look at some of the things that they would vow to dedicate. Verse 2 says, if someone makes a special vow to dedicate persons to the Lord, so people would dedicate themselves unto the Lord for service, for serving in, in the sanctuary, right? They would dedicate themselves unto the Lord. Let's go down a little further and look at some of the other things that they would dedicate. If one vows, I'm reading now from verse 9, if what he vowed is an animal that is acceptable as an offering to the Lord, such as an animal given to the Lord, it becomes holy. So persons would vow to dedicate themselves to Adonai or they would dedicate their, their animals to Adonai, right? Now, back up a bit. In, verse, in the first couple of verses that we read, it talks about that person um, um, being given the equivalent value of a male or female and so on and so forth. I have not forgotten that. I'm going to come to that because we're talking about redeeming what is the Lord's. Okay. But first we're going to look at some of the things that people dedicated unto the Lord. And then we're going to come and talk about redemption or redeeming these things. Now, Verse 9, if what he vowed is an animal that is acceptable as an offering to the Lord, such an animal given to the Lord becomes holy. He must not exchange it or substitute a good one for a bad one or a bad one for a good one. If he should substitute one animal for another, both it and the substitute becomes holy. Now, it goes on to talk about if someone vows to dedicate a ceremonially unclean animal meaning an animal that um, god says is clean and holy that can be offered up on the altar one that has split hooves and chews the cud those were the only ceremonially clean animal however if someone offered up a ceremonially unclean animal and dedicated it unto the lord right one that is not acceptable as an offering to the Lord, the animal must be presented to the priest who will judge its quality as good or bad. Whatever value the priest then sets, that is what it will be. Okay, let's move on to verse 14. So, so far we've seen people making a vow to dedicate themselves. We've seen people dedicating animals, both clean and unclean, ceremonially clean and unclean. And now we're going to go to verse 14. It says, if a man dedicates his house as something holy to the Lord, the priest will judge the quality as good or bad, whatever value the priest then sets, so it will remain. Okay. And it says, it continues to say, if the man who dedicates his house redeems it, he must add a fifth to its value and the house will again be his. Now, let us continue. Um, if I'm, let us continue to verse 22. It says, if a man dedicates to the Lord a field he has bought, which is not part of the family land, the priest will determine its value up to the year of Jubilee and the man must pay its value on the day as something holy to the Lord. And it continues. I'm going to encourage you to read Leviticus chapter 27. Now, what is happening here? These are people who um, are part of the, 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 the God's people, the nation of Israel, 
And what they are doing here is that they are dedicating things unto God. They are making a vow. Now, usually these vows are done as an act of thanksgiving. So Adonai does something uh, um, great. He is a good provider. He is a good God. He is awesome. He is wonderful. And the people feel in their hearts that they need to make a vow to, to, as an act of thanksgiving unto God. And so they can dedicate whatever it is that they choose to dedicate, whether they want to dedicate themselves animals land field not land but a field um, or in a house but how it how does that work they take these items to the priest the priest puts a value upon these items right the priests puts a value usually there are set values for certain things are you with me and the person who made the vow turns around and buys it back. How does it work? The person turns around, gives the priests silver or money and redeems back the goods. So for example, let us say I make a vow to God. God, I'm going to dedicate myself unto you for service in your sanctuary. Okay. At that time, it probably would have been a, a, a male because women didn't really get involved in that kind of sanctuary work and so on and so forth, right? But I'm just giving you an example. So I present myself before the, 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 the priest, although, although you do see male and female here being referred to, right? But they could be dedicating themselves unto God for other purposes as well. Are you with me? Okay. So they, I present myself to the priest. The priest looks at me and says, well, you look very, 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 you, you look like you could, you could be valued at X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Let me keep it that way. Right. And then I say, okay, so I now give this priest. So for example, let me see what the Bible says. It's a female set her value at 30 shekels, right? That's what verse four says. If it's a female set her value at 30 shekels. So he looks at me and he says, okay, you are 30 shekels. I now give the priest 30 shekels and now I have redeemed myself. The same thing for an animal, right? I take my animal, the priest looks at it, it gives, gives it, put a value on it. No blemishes, no this, no that. He puts a value on it. I turn around and I give the priest the value and I take back my animal. I, I dedicate my house. The priest comes, he takes a look at it. He says, well, this house is valued at such and such and such. And he sets a price. I give him that price, right? And there were in some cases where a fifth or so, where additional money was added to the value of the house. Whatever the situation is, that individual now gives the priest money and takes back the, the, the item. What is being done here? What is being done here is in an effort to ensure that there was money available in the treasury so that things could be so so that the sanctuary could be maintained first it was a tabernacle well in the tabernacle we didn't really have much of tithing and redeeming and so on and so forth going on um much but when we get over into the temple into the temple era and so on and when we get over into when the people get over into the land it was a requirement that these things especially the tithing of the grain and the, and the wine and so on and so forth be done but listen don't get sidetracked listen to the principle listen keenly right so the the, the whole idea is to ensure that the the, the 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 treasury has silver in it so that the sanctuary is able to be maintained are you with me now when we get down to verse 26 there is a shift and this is what adonai says he says no one however may dedicate the firstborn of an animal since the firstborn already belongs to the lord because my brothers and sisters the lord had already declared earlier in torah that the firstborn animal and the firstborn son and the firstborn of everything belongs to Adonai. The first of everything belongs to Adonai. 
now these are some of the things that they forget to teach us about tithing and i'm coming to that in just a minute so god says you cannot dedicate a firstborn animal to me because it already belongs to me you must dedicate to me something that belongs to you right because the firstborn of everything belongs to me now let us look quickly at exodus exodus chapter 22 29 really really quickly 22 exodus 22 29 says do not hold back offerings from your grain rays or your vats you must give me the firstborn of your sons this is a it's it's it, it, it's it's just a statement that you you can so easily miss here is what we need to understand the firstborn or the first of everything belongs to adonai even israel's firstborn son do you remember when we read over in the new testament right that when yeshua was a baby his parents presented him to the temple and in our western minds we probably think oh his parents presented him to the temple because you know maybe he went to be christened to be blessed but 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 he went yes he was he was prayed over and blessed and so on because the jewish people are very big on dedicating and blessing their children lifting up their children to the lord but there was more than that the mother mary had to go through the final part of her ceremonial rites right but that's not that's not what I, what, what, what I want to highlight. Yeshua had to be brought to the temple because as their firstborn son, he also had to be redeemed. So if, 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 a, peer, if a parent right, wants to redeem their, ch their child, their son, right, they would have to take the child to the priest they would have to pay a price for the firstborn son that the firstborn son could be redeemed right the firstborn son could be redeemed um i'm trying to see if it is mentioned here i think it's five shekels for boys and three shekels for girls if I, five shekels for boys if i'm not mistaken but but anyway the firstborn son was also um redeemed right so when yeshua was taken to the temple as a baby his parents also had to pay money to redeem him. Okay? So, it's important for us to get this. Why? Because we need to understand that the first of everything belongs to God. And it was not only about grains from the field and so on and so forth. It was about animals and it was also about sons. Are you with me? And the 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 these uh, these uh, firstborn and first of everything was not something that was done voluntarily this was mandatory on the torah are you with me now let's quickly jump over to verse 30 verse 30 says a tithe of everything from the land whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees belongs to the lord it is holy it is what it is holy to the lord the tithe is holy to the lord what did we say tithe means it means a tenth a tithe of everything from the land whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees belongs to the lord it is holy to the lord if a man redeems any of his tithe so a man could redeem some of his tithes if a man redeem any of his tithe tithe sorry he must add a fifth of the value to it the entire tithe of the herd and the flock every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the lord L let me just say this again every tithe of the herd and the flock every tenth animal so every tenth animal right that passes under the shepherd's rod belongs to adonai why tenth we're gonna get into why a tenth we're going to get into that right so are you are you are you getting this people god commanded 
that a tithe be given to him, right? It didn't belong to the priest. It didn't belong to the poor. It didn't belong to the Levites. It belonged to God. That is why in Malachi chapter 3, God could say to the people, you are robbing me. The whole nation of you are robbing me. Why? Because they were taking something that belonged to God. Right? Now, after these things are brought before God and dedicated unto him, he had given special instructions as to how these things were to be allotted, how they were supposed to be used. So there were things that were brought that was for the priests, for the Levites. There were peep things... Um, Part of the tithe and so on would go to the needy. Part of the, there were different tithes in Israel, and I'm going to send you to do a research on the different tithes that Israel had to had to give. There were three different tithes tithes that Israel had to give. So you can go and do that research on your own. But in the interest of time, I won't get into that. Right? So 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 are you getting this? There, were, there was the, the vow, the dedication, the voluntary offering, right? That a person can give to Adonai, right? And make to Adonai as part of keeping the sanctuary and maintaining the sanctuary and so on and so forth and whatever other needs the sanctuary might have. But then there, was a, there were things that God required. He required the firstborn son. He required the firstborn of the animal, right and he said while they could redeem the child the firstborn son they could not redeem the 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 firstborn of an animal since the firstborn already belonged to him right and then he talks now about the tithe a tithe of everything in the land a tithe of your animal a tithe of everything that you have belongs to me now what is the principle the principle is that we are to give a tenth of everything that we have or a tenth of our of, of of the things that we earn or achieve right because we recognize that everything that we have comes from adonai it comes from god right so when god said to the people i want you to tithe because everything belongs to me he was telling the people i am adonai king of the universe and everything that you have belonged to me. So it's like recognizing that everything that we have belongs to Adonai or it is from Adonai's hand. So now we give it back onto Adonai. And I want to just jump back to what he said about the tithe in verse 30 of Leviticus 27. He says it's holy. The tithe is holy. It is a requirement of God and it is holy unto him. Now, let me say, let me say this. A lot of times... Tithing is a very controversial issue, right? Some persons believe it's not for believers today. Some persons believe it's Old Testament and it don't have any it doesn't have any bearing on people who are not natural born Israelites. Some people believe that if you're not in the land then you don't tithe because the tithing was only grains and so on and so forth and that's not true. They were part of tithes that was that was actually tra um 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 transferred to money and so on and so forth which was which was then later given to the priest there is a lot that you can learn when you do this research on tithing and so on and so forth and then there are people even people who say that they are torah observant or trying to live a torah observant life um they're they're they believe in messiah but they're trying to walk out their faith in a in a, in a jewish way and observing torah and so on who although they say they believe in torah do not believe in tithing and I want to say that's very sad because we can't decide what we what we will what we will obey and what we will not obey, right? So we can't say that some things are okay. We can keep feast days and sabbaths and so on and so forth. But when it comes to tithing, no, that's not for us. We are we are in violation of the word of God and the principle of tithing, right? Is that we honor God because it is He who gives us everything that we have. Also we must recognize that another principle of tithing is that we must take care of the house of god the sanctuary and we are to take care of those around us we are to take care of the community of faith first and then we can take care of our neighbors we can take care of other people it is supposed to be used to help the community the needy the widows the orphans the poor whatever you want to call them right we have a responsibility 
to do that as believers. So that's the principle of 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 tithing and so on and and and, and all of that stuff. Whether you wanna whether you wanna say um, let me not go there for now. I'm coming there. I'm coming to that. So that's the principle. Now let's jump into those questions that I talked about earlier. The first question. Are we required to tithe? Are we as believers in Yeshua the Messiah required to tithe? Now, here's the thing. We, we don't live in the land of Israel. We are not an agricultural society. We are not a, the Western world is not really an agricultural society per se, right? They're, they're, they're farmers and so on and so forth, um, farming societies and so on and so forth. But we, we operate with, with, with money, right? When we work, we get paid in cash, right? Now, we dedicate a tenth unto God. Sorry, not that we dedicate a tenth unto God. It is a requirement, right? That if we are in covenant with God, because this law was given to his covenant people. Now, if you're in covenant with God, whether you are a natural born Jew or not a natural born Jew, you are a Jew by adoption, a Jew, a Jew by the spirit of God, a Jew because you are a son of Abraham, as we read in the book of, um, of Galatians, that if you are a believer in Messiah, you are a seed of Abraham, then it applies to you and you are required to tithe. So you don't have seeds and flour and wheat and, and grapes and oil and these things and whatever, but you, you, you have what you have in your hand. And if you are in covenant, then you, one, recognize that what you have belongs to God and you present a tenth to him. No. Um, the second question. What if I want to give more than 10%? Now, here's, here's the thing. There, there is, uh, there is the tithe, and there is the offering. We see that in Torah, people have people bring their free, free, free gift offering, free will offering, if you free will offering, and they give it unto God. Nobody asks them, nobody requires it of them. They bring it unto the Lord. So, if you want to give your free will offering unto the Lord, you can give your free will offering unto the Lord. But it does not negate the fact that God requires a tenth from us. Why tenth? Let's talk about the tenth. Why tenth? It's a spiritual number, by the way. It's a spiritual, it has spiritual symbolism. A tenth of something is a representation of the whole. A tenth is a representation. It symbolizes the whole. So, for example, the Apostle Paul makes a statement where he says something about if the first batch or if the first dough is holy, then the whole batch or the whole bread or the whole dough is holy, right? So I want to tell you this as an aside, that even Jewish women, when they're baking and so on and so forth, even now they break off a pinch or pinch, a pinch off a, a piece of the dough um, as a representation, because if the, if the first part of the dough is holy, then the entire dough is holy. So why a tenth? Because a tenth is symbolic. It represents the whole. So when you present your tithe to God, a tenth of your earnings, right, to God, you are saying, God, I'm presenting this to you. Because you have presented it to God, it automatically becomes holy. So it means that the rest of your, the rest of your money is holy. The rest of your money is holy. That is a principle of Torah. Whatever it is that we dedicate unto God, it automatically becomes holy. So if you dedicate a tent unto God, it means that your money is holy. Your, your resources are holy. Are you with me, people of God? It means, therefore, that if something is holy, the enemy cannot touch it. Which is why he could say in Malachi 3, bring in your full um, tides and see if I do not rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke the devourer or the one who devours. That sounds off. I will rebuke the, 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 the one who is there to devour your fields, your crops, because your first, your tenth is holy. Also, to the persons who say, 
I give more than 10%. I give what I feel like giving. The 10% was not, um, the 10% was not um, something that Israel decided to give. It was what God told them to give. So we can't come and say, well, we are going to choose how much we want to give. So if I want to give 50%, I can give 50%. If you want to give you 50%, fine. But make sure that you take out 10% and say, God, I'm dedicating this on to you. And then the other 40%, you can give it as your voluntary gift, right? But the, the, the tithe belongs to God. He was the one who mandated it and he was the one who set the figure. Why 10%? Because the number 10 symbolizes wholeness, completion. It represents a whole. The number 10 represents a whole. What am I saying? So for example, in scripture, if we see 10 nations, it doesn't necessarily mean 10 nations. That 10 is representing all the nations. Are you with me? All right. So let's get back to this. So if you want to give more than 10% or if you feel that, you know, you're doing a wonderful thing because you're giving more than 10%. I just want to tell you that the concept of 10% was God's idea. So yes, give your free will offering, but your 10% is a different thing altogether. Are you with me? And it belongs to God first. So there are people who say, um, well, I'm just going to give my 10% to the person on the street or to the, or to, or to, or to whatever. That's not the protocol. God give a protocol. He gave a protocol. God is very big on protocol. We, we don't decide how we do our thing. We don't decide how we do our thing. If you want to give money to the needy on the street, by all means do it. Right. But you have a responsibility to give your tithe in a particular way it is brought first to the priest to the minister of god whoever who lifts it up and dedicates it unto god first that's how it becomes holy people of god that's how it becomes holy it is given unto god and everything that gets into it, that, that is presented before the lord that is why in the church when you give your tithes and offering on a sunday the minister prays over it what is he doing he's dedicating it unto god first before it is used to do what god has said it is to be used to do which is to take care of those who minister to 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 to, to make sure that the sanctuary is 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 uh, maintained and also to ensure that there is food in the storehouse for the needy are, are you with me okay so so there's a protocol and we have to follow it we can't do our own thing people we can't do our own thing now um number three the, the, our New Testament believers require to tithe because there is no mention of tithing in the New Testament. No, this part of the discussion, you know, so many persons I've heard this time and time again. And people, like I say, a lot of the things that I teach, these are things that the Holy Spirit taught me. All right. So let me just say that. No, New Testament and tithes. We don't see a command in the New Testament to say, thou shalt tithe. We wouldn't. Why? Because by the time we get to the New Testament, remember people, these are Jews. These are Jewish people. Tithing was already an established protocol. It was already an established fact. Are you with me? So no one would have to command. Yeshua wouldn't have to command people to tithe because it was already established. He said to the Pharisees in Matthew 23, 23, he said to them, you pay your tithes. You pay your uh, tithes of your mint and your cumin and your herbs and so on and so forth. But you have forgotten the weightier things of the law, such as mercy and justice. So tithing was already established the people already knew it right so nobody had to preach it because it was already a known fact no we wouldn't see tithing in the in the in the fledgling church either why 
we only a lot of people say we only see giving in the in the early church because people brought their gifts and gave to the apostles and lay them at the apostles feet and so on you wouldn't see anybody being told to bring their tithes and lay it at the apostles feet because that was not the established protocol either the established protocol was that the tithe would go to the priest so those things would be taken directly to the temple not to the apostles the apostles, however, would say, as a community of, 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 of believers in Yeshua the Messiah, bring your, 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 your resources so that there will be enough for everybody. So that there will be enough for everybody. So we see people bringing their, their selling fields and so on and bringing money and so on and, 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 and all of that so that there was enough for everybody in the community right it didn't negate the fact that they were also tithing because they would have had to take those things to the temple and this is why my brothers and sisters it is so important for us to um to 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 study the word of god from a jewish perspective because when we don't we miss a lot of stuff and we misinterpret a lot of stuff right so in the new testament we don't see tithing as a command because the commandments were already established from over in torah right and so it would not necessarily be repeated in the new testament but it doesn't mean that it didn't exist and it didn't mean that yeshua was saying if you're a believer in me don't do this or or so because he wouldn't do that because he said he didn't come to abolish the law but he came to fulfill it meaning that he came to give it its meaning now let me see if there is another question that i have here tithe would have been taken to the temple so how about us today how about us today oh some people ask if gentiles are supposed to tithe now here here's the thing with 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 who we call Gentiles in scripture. There are two groups of persons, right? So we have Gentiles who would join themselves to Israel and become part of the covenant. They wanted to become part of the covenant. So what would they, what would they do? They would become proselytes. So they would become circumcised and so on and so forth and they would become Jewish right and they would now keep the torah of god are you with me they would obey the torah of god but there was also another group of gentiles among the jewish people right and these people are who we call god fearers so they're not necessarily proselytes but they believe in the god of israel right but they've just joined themselves to israel they worship the God of Israel. They believe in the God of Israel that he is uh, the one true and living God. But they have not come into covenant. They have not come into covenant. If you were to go and read the account of Lydia in scripture, it tells us that Lydia was a god fearer. But it also tells us that after she was ministered to, she now um, um, engaged in mikvah, which is, which is a, the ritual washing, which is what we call baptism today. And now she, 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 she became part of the covenant. Are you with me? Now, what we need to understand about Gentiles in scripture. So, yes, there are two groups. There, there are people who, become, who, who, who uh, convert and become part of covenant. And then there are people who are just God-fearers. So they believe in the God of Israel. But also remember that in Israel, Gentiles were not... Uh, um, we're not allowed to have land and so on and so forth and, and, and all of that stuff, right? So, so you need to also keep that in mind. Now, for persons who say that Gentiles are not allowed to pay tithes, or not, not allowed, but not required to pay tithes, I'm going to say to you the same thing that I just said to you about the two groups in, a, in another way. Those persons who have become part of the covenant, they are now in a covenantal relationship with God. I want you to know that God no longer sees you as Gentile. He sees you as part of the commonwealth of Israel, joined to the commonwealth of Israel, as we read in Ephesians chapter 2. Gentile um, 
in the truest sense of the word, word is really speaking about people who are, who, are, who are pagans, but it also means people who are not naturally born Israelites. However, once we come into covenant, based on the Apostle Paul's writing, we are now seen as sons and daughters of Abraham. Covenant people. Are you with me? Now, if you're part of covenant, if you're part of covenant, then you should be doing what the law requires for God's covenant people. If you believe that you're just a God-fearer and you want to, to do what you want to do and you don't see yourself as part of covenant, then that's up to you. But let me say this, let me say this, and I'm, I'm finished now, by the way. Let me say this, my brothers and sisters. At the end of the day, obeying the Torah of God, obeying God's commandments is a choice that we make. God does not have a stick over anybody's head commanding them that they must, you must obey me. He never did it with Adam and Eve. And, and he doesn't do it with us. He gives us paths he says this is the path to life this is the path to death you choose obedience leads to life disobedience leads to death you choose god has given us the freedom of choice right we have our own volition so obeying torah is a choice that you make right but uh, i just uh, wanted to share with you as the spirit of the lord can i just download it in my spirit today as i was going through and doing my stuff all of this just kind of just came down and the spirit of the i said okay lord i will i will i will do this now i just want to remind you what um what we read in scripture that if the first of the dough is holy right then the entire dough is holy and so my prayer is that uh, you will take this to Adonai in prayer and hear his heart concerning you. Hear his heart concerning you, right? Romans eleven sixteen. If the first part of the dough is holy, so is the whole batch. And it's referring to um, that Jew jewish gentile relationship are you are you with me read it for yourselves romans eleven sixteen. if the first part of the dough is holy then the whole batch is holy so that's what i want to share with you today if you have been blessed by this teaching please go ahead give it a give this video a thumbs up it helps our channel um and also please feel free Free to share it on your social media platforms so that others will be able to see it there are lots of things my brothers and sisters that we do not because we want to do them we don't continue in error necessarily because we want to continue in error a lot of times we're in error because we haven't been taught the truth and to be honest my heart is so blessed because I know that the Lord is doing a work in the hearts of his people so share this on your social media platforms and remember to like it also if you have been blessed by this ministry and you feel so led to support the work of this ministry, we are a non-profit organization. We're not in this to make a profit and to, and to, and to all of that stuff. So, so a lot of, a lot of um, how we are supported is through your generous giving. Okay, that's how we are supported as a ministry. So if you feel so led as to give into this ministry and support our work, please feel free to do so. The information is going to be in the description box below as to how you can do that. Also, if you are not part of a church community and you don't have um, somewhere that you can tithe, please feel free to, to prayerfully consider tithing into this ministry okay um our email information is in the description box below also if you feel like reaching out to myself or to profit please feel free to do so we look forward to hearing from you 
So until we meet again, I'm Apostle Raquel. Thank you so much for your time. May Adonai bless you richly and may he bless the work of your hands. In Yeshua's name, amen. Shalom, everybody.